Hello tubers. Here we have the I-700 Vista Breeze. Just a small turbine on the man cave. Tower is roughly 23 feet from the top of the turbine to the ground. Southerly wind today coming from the south. Around 20 kilometers an hour. My rate of wind speed in Nova Scotia is somewhere around 6.5 meters per second. That's just about uh, rate of wind speed for this to fire up or start creating power. That's where we are with this today. It's uh, somewhere around them numbers of uh, 20 kilometers an hour. That would be around 12 or 13 miles an hour. We may have gusts up to 30 kilometers an hour, which would go from 12 to 13 miles an hour up to about 18 or 19 miles an hour, but it's definitely not rate of wind speed. However, the I-700. See what she does. She's inside. Faintly hear it from here. So we have this charge controller here, which came with the Esther Breeze, but it doesn't work with lithium iron phosphate. So what I've done is I've disconnected everything from the initial board, which is here. This board came off of it, it is for flooded lead acid batteries. I just pulled the board out. And anybody's interested in this board, let me know. Uh, definitely be able to work something out. It's no good to me, it's for flooded lead acid. This was the heat sink that was on the back of it. And then there's a steel plate inside. So I simply took that uh, uh, board out and I replaced it with three fuses, the three blue fuses. And then in there is a red fuse. The three blue fuses bring the three phase wires in from the turbine. They then go over here from the top of the fuses to this break. So in need of a storm, I can shut this right down. Uh, it also has uh, this, this heat sink that I originally played with for about a week. So for one week, this heat sink with this three phase uh, bridge rectifier on it, yeah, it worked. It worked and it worked, uh, well, I'm not going to say very well, but yeah, it worked. So I also installed uh, this drop meter on the back here, and I also installed this shunt on the side so I could read it. So the negative off of this shunt goes over to this charge controller, and the positive comes from the positive line to this breaker, and it goes to the positive battery of, uh, to this charge controller so it does have a break a breaker in it 40 amp and the other three are 20 amp and the most this turbine can produce is 30 amps on full harvest so the brake works the turbines fused and I added the uh, drock uh, amp meter to it disconnected the XYCD 60 and all I use is the case the brake switch in case of uh, an, uh, an emergency like Fiona and I can monitor this. Now, when I put this in, this was running uh, for roughly with this heat sink on it, this, uh, see if I can get you here a better view, about five days. And I hit some winds in them five days uh, of about 30 to 50 kilometers an hour. And this thing did produce, it hit high, uh, higher numbers, much higher than uh, I'm hitting right now. The problem is when you run that, it's like putting the brakes on. What I mean by that is it's like flash charging. It would charge and then completely drop off to nothing. So the problem is that would be considered PWM, pulse width modulation. So it would, when it put the brakes on, it would take all the RPMs from the turbine and the turbine would only give uh, roughly uh, small numbers. So you can see in the bottom right corner, it has 503 watt hours in this. I can get you dialed in here, bottom right corner. So in that 503 hours and five days, I created 240 watt hours from just the uh, three phase rectifier. So the three phase rectifier in five days made 240 watt hours. I hooked this up two days ago and it is 
uh, an MPPT. However, uh, the MPPT in eight hours produced the same amount of power, a little bit more in eight hours, than the three-phase rectifier did in roughly five days with higher winds. Now I'm only hitting 20 kilometers an hour out there, but and if you watch this, you'll see that it does hit sometimes up to as high as uh, 10 amps in this low wind. But what I notice about this charge controller is this charge controller is MPPT. I don't know the name of it. It's unbranded. It's like a $200 Cana uh, Canadian dollar uh, MPPT charge controller, but it does work. I can validate that it works because it doesn't stop. As you can see here, the watts, I know they're not very much, but I'm only hitting rated speed. So where you make them comparative, it's any wonder people are frustrated with these wind turbines because you, you can run them on the three-phase bridge rectifier, but I'm running lithium iron phosphate batteries, so it was a concern. I didn't want any high spikes, and I had to regulate it. There's no way out of it. So by purchasing this uh, low-end uh, wind turbine from uh, charge controller from Amazon, I had it in I think five or six days maybe somewhere around there and the difference is absolutely incredible so we went down to nothing because again we are only at rated wind speed which you'll see this thing uh, crank up and down somewhere around these numbers of uh, uh, anywhere from the top right corner from zero amps to uh, 10 amps but I haven't had a chance to test this further I only had this turbine put up and the first five days of wind that I did get was on a bridge rectifier, which gave me 240 watt hours. I now have an eight hours, again, more than uh, what I've gotten five days in, in roughly eight hours. Uh, I ordered a I-15 100 Estabreeze for the main house. So you can see I'm going up to five amps, two amps, three amps. And that's a 48 volt system. This one's a 24 volt system. And at rated speed, that's pretty impressive because this pretty much does not stop. So the question is, how long will this last? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But on Amazon, it did give really good reviews, but there was only five reviews of it. But in the five reviews, they were good, but I think it's a shot in the dark when you're buying these. But most charge controllers people don't know are bought in China or the parts are. Anyways, but some of them are a higher end, like this Outback uh, solar charge controller. But when you're looking for uh, these wind turbine MPPT charge controllers, it's, it's very vague. There's uh, very little information on it. Uh, it's, it's hard to find something that you're uh, trying to research because it's, it's almost like it's a, a new world for tur turbines to be in the MPPT uh, market. But I can tell you, as you can see here, this thing just keeps going and, and even low rate at wind speeds this thing is where it shines uh, it, it will still create power even though it's uh, small amounts it just keeps uh, it keeps going I know it's not a lot it's a it's a small amount but it just keeps going so uh, hopefully this clears up some areas with people to know that if you're gonna run a bridge rectifier one of these on a heat sink this is nowhere uh, where you want to be with any battery if you can have these low wind charges uh, take a better effect for you in the areas of uh, uh, MPPT for the low wind that's where this shines so hope this helps guys we're putting up on another video a uh, I-1500 and this is going to become the dump load for it on the 48 volt this is the TriStar 60 and uh, that'll be called for and recirculated put back in production I also have this uh, Xantrax XW6150, uh, and it's uh, used in a Zan bus system. Anybody interested in this? I'm looking to trade it for a Midnight Classic that can be used on wind. You have one of these guys. Here's the Terminator block. This is for a Zan bus system. That's a $1,000 charger, Canadian dollars. Anyone looking for such uh, an animal there? It, willing to trade for a Midnight Classic solar or wind charge controller? I'd be interested. So that's the i700. This debris and action, and uh, I hope this helps, guys. This is uh, an MPPT charge controller. It does work, and in comparative to the three-phase bridge rectifier, I highly recommend. If you're going to run with a wind turbine, run it with simply MPPT. That's all I got.